a far future dying earth setting in the nature of Vance, with a story in first person in the vein of Caesar, or more comparatively to the science fantasy Sun Eater series by Christopher Rocchio. Add a little of Clark Ash and Smith as well, and the finest prose, and you have The Shadow of the Torturer. But really, there is so much more to the story, and we're going to explore that today. Hello and welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I am your host, Liam, aka Himvar. Today I'll be doing a spoiler-free review of Gene Wolfe's The Shadow of the Torturer. Shadow of the Torturer is a 1980 novel by Gene Wolfe in book one of four of the Book of the New Sun, the first series in the Solar Cycle. Our protagonist is Severian, an apprentice torturer. The story starts as he and his fellow apprentices Roche, Eata, and Drott are attempting to enter the necropolis. They encounter guards and grave robbers in this short adventure. You will immediately notice that the story is a little wordy, but mostly it's thick, stylized, poetic prose, though I wouldn't call it purple in this case. He does somewhat frequently use obscure literary words, and sometimes they replace what could easily be a word everyone would recognize, though he does explain this at the end of the book as well. Honestly, all the odd words reminded me of Jack Vance as well. The setting itself is amazing. It's very much based off of Vance's Dying Earth, and it is, in fact, in the same genre of Dying Earth fiction. Wolf has realized and does explore more in depth his world, more so than Vance. He calls it Earth, spelt U-R-T-H. It is ancient. Uh, this is very far in the future. Many have left the stars, and some seem to occasionally visit back from the stars, but for the most part, the people, at least in the city of Nessus, are in a society where much technology is not available to the common person. At least technology we would consider modern is not available. It's very much a medieval setting, and this is why the series is considered science fantasy. Nessus itself is many, many leagues in diameter, growing and falling into ruin at the same time. It houses an unknown amount of peoples, though presumably in the tens of millions. It's so large that some people in it do not even know monumental structures in different parts of the city. Severian himself has seen very little of it at the start of the story. On that note, let us get back to our main character. Severian, our narrator, has a perfect memory. He doesn't forget anything. But he may be an unreliable narrator, as he himself says early in the book, quote, I realize that I am in some degree insane, unquote. This is similar of Kugel from a couple of the Dying Earth books, who is also an unreliable narrator, though Kugel is not insane, he is just arrogant. This status of unreliability made the story very, very interesting to read, and it honestly made it kind of a puzzle to piece together. Wolf's world seems somewhat existential and decayed beyond repair. Severian is a really interesting character with some humanity, but he is fun to explore with. He is very isolated and knows so little at the start, and as he goes about, he makes little sense of his real world as well, which also makes it a puzzle. I think it is very important to note that Severian is not a hero by any meaning of the word. He's not even a good guy or even particularly likable in a lot of cases. Of the other characters, Ultan, the master librarian and curator, was relatable and kept on rattling off some of my own inner thoughts. Vodalus makes a quick appearance at the start and is an Eidolon for most of the book after. Thea and Thecla play interesting roles on young Severian as well, and later in the story, Dorcas was by far my favorite character beyond Severian. Another heads up, there is a short torture scene in chapter 3, and while it is a little disturbing for a paragraph or two, the focus quickly shifts elsewhere. It's also not very obvious that this is a dying earth setting at some points. Severian often has visions and generally in dreams, and in one of these he sees a younger earth with a blue sky. And this also is made mention that the sun is red and about to burn out later on in the story as well. But generally, it's not on everyone's tongue like it is, say, in Vance's work. This lends itself to part of the weirdness of the story. Beyond that, it's very deep and elegant, at least a prose. The world was comfortable and almost familiar. It reminded me of growing up, sort of, though I've had none of Severian's experiences at all, thank God. The world building is subtle and sometimes it went over my head, such as the tower that Severian lives in at the start of the book. It is likely a spaceport or once was one. While familiar though, it's also simultaneously has a pervasive feeling of being lost. That's the best I think I can describe it. After finishing, I felt I was waking from a dream. 
This book is certainly not for everyone. I was able to guess one revelation shortly before its unraveling, though it was still very interesting. The entire story itself was captivating. This is weird fiction, science fiction with a fantasy feeling, and as the story goes on, it gets weirder and weirder. While an older Severian is narrating similar to Sun Eater, it is not similar in that he doesn't lead with what he's done and where he is now. The only thing spoiled is that he's alive, until much later in the book, and even then it's just the end and not the means. Names and faction are often mentioned with little to no explanation, which cuts down on exposition. A creator god seems to be commonly believed in, the pan creator, and other similar beings are mentioned from time to time. Also, there seems to be a belief in a new sun. Whether that's actually a new star or a type of messiah, I'm not quite sure at this point. A few deep topics are brought up, and some of them are explored, and when they are, I found that they were briefly but effectively explored. The illusion of power, the reason murder exists, the futility of persistence, are just a few. Among his tangents and other narrating techniques, Severian often mentioned things like, this was the last time I went here or saw this person, or I said I wouldn't break that oath, but I did, more than once. The one that got me the most was, this was the last thing I said to her. Overall, this story has torture, death, awesome swords, and futuristic tech mixed with glimpses of the past, deception, duels, and even theatrical productions. If you do read this, you may notice some uncanny similarities to Sun Eater, even making the suggestion at the end about not reading further. I believe Mr. Rocchio had not yet read Book of the New Sun when he wrote Empire Silence, so it is purely coincidental, but it is quite a coincidence. And with a mix of surprised and not surprised, the story actually ends on a cliffhanger, which I wasn't really expecting, but again, I'm at the same time, I'm not surprised about it, just based off of all the other things that happened in the book. After the last chapter, there is an appendix with a note on the translation from the future language into English. This is very, very short and a nice touch to the tone of the story and explains some of the words used in the writing. For those who care, I did give Shadow of the Torture five stars on Goodreads. This is one of the two books in the buddy read for this month. It's pretty short if you can get into the writing. I'll have my review for Claw the Conciliator before the month is over. As you can tell, I had a hard time making my thoughts cohesive, and I have a lot of them. I hope to be able to elaborate in the spoiler discussion I'll be doing later. Thanks again to those who are participating in the buddy read, and thanks for watching. Let me know what you thought of this review. I always appreciate the feedback. I'd also like to say thanks again for everyone who watches and comments it's really nice having a sense of community, I guess you could say. As of recording this, I have still less than 100 subscribers, but I'm actually pretty close, and it's pretty crazy that it's only been a couple months, and here we are. Anyways, it's been Liam with Liam's Lyceum. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.